Hey everyone, Victor is here and welcome back to Synthesis Sunday where we talk about fun synthesis challenges. If you want to work on this synthesis on your own first, make sure you pause this video right now because I'm going to jump into my retrosynthetic analysis. So the elephant in the room that is just staring at me here is that this looks like a deceptively simple synthesis. We have the chlorine uh, in the order position in our toluene and we just need to replace it with this ester. However, that is also where the challenge is, because replacing the chlorine uh, with this uh, ester via, let's say, something like an SN2 reaction, well, that's not really going to be possible. Likewise, using the nucleophilic aromatic substitution in this case is also not going to be a viable strategy, because we don't have an electron withdrawing group to stabilize the negatively charged intermediate. What we do do have here is this CH3, which is an electron donating group, and that is a huge problem, because if we try to do some sort of a nucleophilic substitution directly with this orthochlorinated toluene, then we are going to lose any region selectivity, and we are essentially going to waste half of our starting material, which is never a good idea. So, what sort of options do we have? Well, let's look at our final product and think how we can make that. As I have already said, we are making an ester here. So, how do we make esters? We could make it by using the acyl substitution if we react the phenoxide uh, with some sort of carboxylic acid derivative, maybe like an acid chloride or an ester or something of that sort. But as I've mentioned before, putting this O- in the order position in our chlorinated toluene is not going to be an easy task, so probably that one is not a good idea. There is, however, another very useful alternative, which is the bayer villiger oxidation reaction. That oxidation will be able to selectively put an oxygen right over here between our phenyl ring and the uh, carbonyl, which means that now we need to focus on how to add this two-carbon chunk to our molecule. And since we are going to be making a new carbon-carbon bond, Probably one of the easiest ways to accomplish that would be via the Grignier reaction, followed by the corresponding oxidation to uh, make a ketone out of the alcohol. So now, when we have a good idea of how our synthesis is going to look like, let's assemble it all together. I am, of course, going to start by redrawing my starting material and converting it into the corresponding organometallic, the greener reagent in this case, by treating it with uh, magnesium in the presence of uh, THF or ether-like solvents giving me the corresponding magnesium chloride. Now, in order to introduce my two-carbon moiety into the molecule, I'm going to perform a reaction with the acetaldehyde, followed by the aqueous workup, of course. So, in this case, our organometallic compound going to react with the electrophilic carbon of our aldehyde, giving the uh, new carbon-carbon bond that we are looking for which, after the acidic workup, going to give us the following alcohol. So now we need to oxidize our alcohol into the ketone, and since this is already a secondary alcohol, the oxidation method is not really going to matter much here, so we can use almost anything that we like. So I'm going to go with the Swern oxidation to make sure that I don't over-oxidize my molecule and I don't accidentally convert everything into the carboxylic acids by using Jones oxidation. Because I will remind you that when it comes to the Jones oxidation and using chromium oxide and sulfuric acid or chromic uh, acid or uh, potassium bichromate, those guys can actually oxidize benzylic positions for as long as they have a hydrogen, so the Jones oxidation would be able to oxidize this method group into the carboxylic acid, and correspondingly this group as well, it will chop off the carbon and oxidize it to the carboxylic acid as well. We definitely don't want to see that, so better not risk it. So now, when I have my ketone, the last thing here is to do my Bayer-Villiger oxidation, which is just a reaction with uh, metachloroperbenzoic acid, MCPBA, or any other peroxy acid for that matter, it doesn't really matter which peroxy acid you are going to use. And as a result, we are going to get our target molecule. So, what did you think about this synthesis? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, boop the like button, check out this video next, and I will see you next time.